सेगमेंट ट्वेंटी सेवन पेज नंबर वन नाइनटी टू असेसमेंट एंड ऑडिट अंडर कस्टम्स इन केस ऑफ कस्टम्स वी हैव सेल्फ असेसमेंट एंड प्रोविजनल असेसमेंट सेल्फ असेसमेंट इज गिवन अंडर सेक्शन सेवेंटीन वेर एज प्रोविजनल असेसमेंट इज अंडर सेक्शन एटीन ऑफ कस्टम्स एक्ट सो वॉट इज दिस सेल्फ असेसमेंट वेन एवर देर इज एन इम्पोर्टर और एक्सपोर्टर who knows how much is a customs duty that they are required to pay they will assess the customs duty payable and they will file the bill of entry or shipping bill this bill of entry or shipping bill which is filed by the importer or exporter will be taken up for verification by the customs officer and if everything is proper then the assessment is completed otherwise the proper officer will do the reassessment of that and that reassessed duty we need to pay or we can go for appeal on that basis okay so what is the first step duty to be self assessed by the importer or exporter and how they will do the self assessment they will compute the customs duty and they will report it in their bill of entry in case of import and shipping bill in case of export then this bill of entry or shipping bill will be taken for verification by the proper officer so whether all the bill of entries and shipping bills will be taken no only selected bills on risk parameter basis then if the proper officer is of the opinion that if the self assessment is not done correctly what they will do they will do the reassessment of duty and importer has two options either he may agree and pay the same by amending the bill of entry or shipping bill or he can go for appeal for that he will ask the officer to pass the speaking order within 15 days from the date of reassessment of bill of entry or shipping bill the proper officer will pass a order on the base of that speaking order so he can go for appeal okay this is about self assessment in section 17 the self assessment itself includes scrutiny also here we don't have separate scrutiny assessment and all like in income tax then we have section 18 provisional assessment when provisional assessment will be resorted under customs under gst provisional assessment is only in one case where importer is unable to determine the value or the rate of tax then that is when the registered person so under gst when the tax payer is unable to determine the value or rate of tax he will go for provisional assessment but under customs when the importer or exporter is unable to do the self assessment this point is common between gst and customs but we have extra three points when the proper officer want to carry out chemical examination or test so some goods are imported and you declared some value but proper officer is of the opinion that these goods are not the goods what you have imported so these goods are concealed so lot of people will be importing gold and all in a concealed manner in suit cases they will put that gold they will melt it and put and they will be melting it and they will be making it into greeting cards invitation cards and all so different different ways just follow kochi customs in twitter you will be seeing innovative ways how the gold are being brought into india okay so this particular concealment when they do so the proper officer want to carry out the chemical examination or test and necessary documents not produced before customs officer and customs officer want to carry out further enquiry or documents produced but still proper officer want to carry out further enquiry these are the four situations that lead to provisional assessment what are the four situations number 1 importer or exporter is unable to do the self assessment proper officer want to carry out the chemical examination or test so proper officer want the necessary documents and number 4 necessary documents submitted but still proper officer wanted to conduct further inquiry then whenever the provisional assessment happens first they will pass a order for provisional assessment and they will intimate the person to furnish the documents within 15 days and the document should be submitted within 15 days it can be extended for a further period of 3 months by customs officer 
for further three months by ACDC plus unlimited time by commissioner. Now, when they pass the order for provisional assessment, thereafter final assessment should happen. What is the time limit within which that final assessment should happen? After the order of provisional assessment, whether the documents are submitted or not submitted. If the documents are submitted, from the date the documents are submitted within two months, they need to complete the final assessment. If the documents are not submitted, then within two months from the time for allotted for submission of documents, there is some time now that is allotted on expiry of the time within two months. And is there any possibility of extension of the time? Yes, plus three months by commissioner. But this is just the procedural aspect. This may not be tested, but interest provisions will be tested here. So, upon finalization of assessment, three things could happen. Final assessment amount may be greater than provisional assessment or final assessment equal to provisional assessment or final assessment is less than provisional assessment. If final assessment is more than provisional assessment means the import or exporter is required to pay the differential duty. Am I right? So, that differential duty will be payable along with interest. What is the rate of interest? 15% per annum. From when it will be computed, concentrate from the first day of the month in which the goods are imported, means provisional assessment is resorted. It is not from the date of provisional assessment. For example, if the provisional assessment happened on 28th March, we need to compute interest from 1st March. First day of the month, first day of the month in which provisional assessment is ordered till the date of payment of differential duty. Then suppose if the final assessment amount equals to provisional assessment amount, in that case are we required to pay any differential duty? No. So, interest also will not arise. However, the third scenario, if the final assessment amount is less than the provisional assessment amount, then we need to get the refund. So, that refund, whether they will give interest, sir? Yes. But when you know, after final assessment, within three months, if they are not granting refund, after the three months, 6% per annum they will be paying. When you pay from the first day of the month in which provisional assessment is resorted. But when they pay after final assessment, three months, that too after three months only, they will be paying interest. So, interest will be computed for the delay period after three months. Then importer shall execute a bond in case of warehousing such bond is for thrice the amount of duty payable and furnish security in the form of bank guarantee. Reason being, so he agrees to pay the differential amount now that is why a bond needs to be executed and refund of differential duty upon final assessment is subject to unjust enrichment. What does it mean? We need to prove that we have not transferred the burden to the next person. That is what unjust enrichment. Suppose if the final assessment amount is less than the provisional amount, we need to prove that we did not collect that customs duty from the next person, then only we get the refund. If the burden is already transferred, what will happen? That refund amount will not be given to us. It will be transferred to consumer welfare fund. And provisional assessment is applicable for both imports and exports. And what is the penalty for contravention of any provisions of provisional assessment? Everywhere the penalty will be up to 50,000. Then the next that we have is audit under customs. Only one section we have, section 99A. And this audit is conducted by the customs authorities either at the premises of the audity or it can be conducted in their place that is officer's place okay so this audit is not at the time of clearance this audit is after clearance post clearance audit post clearance audit means structured examination of business relevant commercial systems contracts financial and non-financial records stock everything and where the audit can be carried out either at the premises of the auditee or in the office of the you know proper officer. The proper officer may carry out the audit of import goods or exporters of an audit under this act either in his office or in the premises of the audit. Then we have some regulations in this regard. As per regulation 3, all records that is import and export related records should be preserved 
for a minimum period of five years pertaining to a particular financial year. For example, for the financial year 2022-23, we need to preserve it for next five years. Okay. But the same point in GST, it will be 72 months from the due date of furnishing and return. In case of GST, we need to preserve the records for a period of 72 months, means literally 6 years from the due date of furnishing annual return. But here it is not like that, 5 years from the end of the financial year. Then regulation 4 says, selection of RDT or documents based on risk parameter basis. So not everyone will be subject to audit. And before conducting the audit, a 15 days notice to be given. Whereas in case of GST, it will be 15 working days notice. In case of customs, it is 15 days notice. In GST also, we have department audit. There it will be 15 working days prior notice will be given. And regulation 6 says, CA or CMA can be appointed for assisting the audit. So this audit is not conducted by CA or CMA. This audit will be conducted by the department. But if they need, they can take the support of chartered accountants or cost accountants. And again, contravention of these provisions will lead to penalty how much? Up to 50,000 rupees. So with this, we have seen assessment and audit. Now look into an another area here that is interest on account of delay in payment of customs duty. That is, once we completed the self-assessment, what is the time limit within which we need to pay the customs duty? I told you already. So when we file the bill of entry, the bill of entry is returned for payment. If the bill of entry is acknowledged today, today itself you need to complete the payment of customs duty. Otherwise, what is the interest that you need to pay? For every day delay, interest will be payable at the rate of 15% per annum. That is this. So duty payable on account of self-assessment. You have two options immediate payment option deferred payment option what is immediate payment option on the date of presentation of bill of entry itself you make the payment otherwise interest at the rate of 15 percent per annum for every day delay there is deferred payment option under deferred payment option you can pay the customs duty at frequent intervals what is at frequent intervals if the bill of entry is acknowledged between first to 15th of a month, then 16th working day of that month, you will make the payment, okay. For example, you can see this calendar app just to, to understand. So, for example, I am taking September month. September month, first to 15th, first to 15th, if the bill is returned for payment, then 16th working day of the month. What is 16th working day of the month? Between 1st to 15, how many holidays are there? Only two days, Sundays, two Sundays and we don't have any public holidays. So this Janmashtami, all these things are not considered as public holidays. So therefore, only two Sundays we have. So we need 16th working day. What is the 16th working day? 16th and 18th. So 19th will be the 16th working day. Why? We need to add two days. 15th over here, two days we need to add. Why two days we need to add? Because third and tenth will be Sunday. So we add 16 and 18. Again, 17 will become Sunday. So 16th and 18th. So the 16th working day is 19th. But 19th is Ganesh Chaturthi. So that is not a holiday for the purpose of customs. For the purpose of customs, the holidays is Sundays and public holidays like Independence Day, Republic Day and October 2nd Gandhi Jayanti that will be taken as the public holidays for customs then. So if the bill is written between 1st to 15th of a month then it will be 16th working day of that month. If the bill is written between 16th to end of that month, between 16th to end of that month, don't see anything in this, see the next month first working day. What is the next month first working day? First is actually Sunday. Second is Gandhi Jayanti. That is actually holiday. So third will be taken as the due date. Okay. The bill is returned between 16th to end of that month. Next month first working day. So in this example it will be third. But for the month of March it will be 31st March. If the bill is returned for payment from 1st to 15th day of any month 
due date is 16th day of that month excluding holidays means working day then bill of entry return for payment from 16th day of any month till the last day other than march due date is first day of the following month excluding holidays means next month first working day if the bill of entry is returned for payment from 16th day of march to 31st of march due date is 31st of march and suppose if you are not making the payment by this time interest will be payable at the rate of 15% per annum for every day delay beyond the due date then suppose if it is provisional assessment so we have to pay the provisional assessment duty also na whenever proper officer order for provisional assessment we need to pay the provisional assessment duty what is the time limit within which that provisional assessment duty or reassessment duty should be paid within one working day self assessment duty should be paid in the same day in which bill of entry is acknowledged whereas provisional assessment duty reassessment duty should be paid within one working day after which the bill of entry is returned today bill is written we have to make payment by one working day so tomorrow is sunday so day after tomorrow the payment should be made otherwise interest will be payable at 15% per annum final assessment already we know what is the time limit for making payment of final assessment no time limit but we have to pay interest how much interest we need to pay at the rate of 15% per annum from first day of the month in which provisional assessment is ordered till the actual date of payment so this is about assessment and audit fully we have seen okay